on a race against time to get to Leeds before our train to London. Seven minutes to spare. Not bad, eh? We got here. Come on, let's get on. Well, that was a bit of a close run thing. We just managed to catch the train. A bit of a mix up. Yeah. Trains rescheduled. We had to drive to Leeds instead of getting the train. Yeah, anyway, we caught the train. Yeah. Everything's cool. We're on our way to London to the Connected Britain Conference. I'm chairing a roundtable discussion on the subject of evolving capitalism to support a better connected future. Now, if you have watched my couple of blogs so far, you'll know I feel very strongly about the need for society to change, to be more people-centric and less money-centric. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today, how we can evolve society so that the UK population is better connected in the future and it'll be better connected because we're making longer term decisions for the well-being of the society as a whole and the connected society um, and much less about focusing on making short term gains for large organisations. So really looking forward to the discussion. I want to explore the connection between capitalism and a better connected future for the UK. And I want to do that with a couple of examples of how concentrating on short-term profitability is not good for connectivity in the UK. First example goes back a number of years when broadband suppliers started to advertise unlimited usage products but they were lying because they weren't unlimited, they were limited. On the website, in big bold letters, unlimited. But in the small print of their fair usage policy, what it said was, well actually you couldn't make out what it said because it was so imprecise, but what happened in practice is those customers that used their services heavily either got their bandwidth throttled right down to the point that it was an unusable service and even in some cases got a letter from the supplier to say you're no longer welcome as a customer because you're using the service too much. So oh, I think a great example of uh, a focus on that's going to boost profits for that supplier but is, is, is misleading the consumer. More recently um, the Advertising Standards Authority has said to broadband suppliers like Zen, you need to advertise average speeds to set the expectations correctly for consumers and not up to maximum speeds that you're only going to get if you're right next to the cabinet, right next to the telephone exchange. So, fair enough, we've done some work, we advertise our average speed, and isn't it surprising that some of our competitors on that very same telephone exchange, the very same copper wires that go to those houses are advertising speeds, um, maybe 10 megabits per second higher than ours. How can that be? You know what, I'm not calling them liars, but I'll tell you what, they've been very creative with those numbers. And for me, it just doesn't seem like ethical practice in a more people-focused society and less money-focused, things like that, it's just not gonna happen. Thinking about what's an alternative to the stock market? Could a society exist with something that looks different to the stock market? And how will the ownership work then? And you know, what about those people that want to exit? I think, well I suppose, will it scale for, for Zen itself? I think yes, because 
as we grow and as we become more successful, we can, we can increasingly self-fund. Um, and the other point I see is, is intolerance to failure, yeah. which I think is something in the UK market, mm. particularly the public market. Well, that was a really enjoyable debate and it was really nice for me to hear that everyone agreed that the UK and the world would be a better place if we had a more people-centric and a less money-centric society. We talked about some examples of how we could move towards that new society, that evolved capitalism. We talked about family-owned businesses. We talked about a longer-term, more responsible way of providing equity funding. Um, and we also talked about the challenges and the scepticism of how do we put those elements together to get a more overarching change for society. And, in, and indeed, that's a very big challenge. But having debates like these um, are very valuable, I think, to get the thoughts on people's minds to move the agenda forward. So very worthwhile from my point of view. I'd like to say a big thank you to Total Telecom for inviting me to the conference um, as a panel chairman and also thanks to my delegates for their contributions.